G'day guys, it's Requiem. Today's video, we're going to look at the P38 Lightning. Starting out on the engine, the cell, there's a reflective surface here. And this is what you'll look at just to make sure that the nose wheel is down when you drop the landing gear. Uh, coming back inside in the back left, this is your IFF unit. You've got the window crank to close the left window. And then uh, just to get in position here, just to line it up a bit better. There's the electric fuel pumps, and these are your fuel selectors for the left and right tanks. This green box is controls your bomb and uh, fuel tank controls along with the cockpit light on it. There's a landing gear handle with oxygen pressure. Now the red knobs there are the throttles. And next to the throttles there's your propeller controls. Off to the right is a landing gear warning light. Now above that these are your propeller selector switches which will let you use constant speed or fixed pitch. Underneath that is your elevator trim. And then down to the right and just underneath here, this is your rudder trim along with the engine primer. Coming back up, this is your mixture settings. Here's four settings to use and you've got the carburetor air filter control. There's a fuel level warning lights and propeller circuit breakers. Now coming and looking at the main panel, there's your clock with a suction gauge next to it. Here we've got the standby magnetic compass, then the directional gyro, and a remote indicating compass. Then we've got the fuel tank gauges for the front and the rear. You've got an altimeter, airspeed indicator, hydraulic pressure gauge, and the landing gear with the warning light again, and your Bendix direction indicator. Now underneath these are your propeller feathering controls along with the failed engine lights and the oxygen equipment. There's the tachometer, manifold pressure, artificial horizon, turn and slip indicator, vertical speed indicator, along with the oil temperature with the split oil and fuel pressure gauges for the left and right engines. Then you've got coolant temperatures for both engines, carburetor air temperature for both. And virtual air meters. And this is your main switch box just underneath that. You've got the ignition switches, the oil dilution switches, starter and engage switches, some generators, position lights, all the landing light, the fluorescent lighting and the voltmeter. Now underneath that you've got some more engine controls to look at. On the left hand side this is the oil cooler controls which can be automatic or manually controlled. You've got the battery master, the pitot heat. These are the coolant flaps. Generally you leave these in automatic and if you use them manually they'll open up to 100%. These are your inner cooler controls along with the cockpit light. Then we've got some various circuit breakers here over on the right hand side. So looking on the yoke itself, this red button here are your dive recovery flaps. You'll deploy these before you enter a dive, and this will allow you to do extended dives up to 45 degrees. Um, if you're not using the flaps, then the max you're going to do in an extended dive is 15 degrees. And the placard concerning your dive limits is on the yoke, but I've enlarged it here. Over on the right here, uh, this control is the flaps control. So if you do one quick depress of that, it's going to take you to the maneuvering flap setting, which will extend the flaps about halfway. Uh, your limit on that is no faster than 250 miles an hour. And if you held the button down, you would extend them all the way up to landing, which would be no faster than 150. So there's your VHF radio there. And on the right of that, the other green box is going to be your recognition light controls with a cockpit light on it. You've also got another right window crank handle and aileron boost there. And lastly, these are your Bendix radio controls, along with the manual bomb and fuel tank release handles. So that covers the cockpit for the most part. Uh, now we'll look at how to start the engines in the P-38. So initially you can select uh, the first engine, the second engine, or you can just go with both uh, for standard. You're going to put the RPM all the way forward and make sure they're on the constant speed setting. The oil cool is going to stay in automatic and the inner coolers will be open. And then when you're ready you can just press the E button and uh, that'll start the automated sequence to go through the process of starting the engine. Um, and as the engine starts we're going to move the mixture lever up towards the auto rich position which is about 70% on the techno chat.
So now we're here, the start is starting to engage. So the engine's about to get going. Right, so it kicks over, we move the mixture up to 70% for the auto reach position, and we're done. Right, so moving forward in time a little bit. Again, same process as before, but I'm doing it with the second engine comes the starter coming online and the engine starts over we move the mixture up to that auto rich position the engine started and we can look at the pilot's notes for the P38 So I've got both engines started, we're ready to taxi, so we can close the canopy, so we'll bring down the top, and then the left and right crank handles will bring up the left and right windows. Now the P38 will have the parking brake engaged by default, so when you're ready you can add some power, and then you can just tap your tow brakes, and that'll release the parking brake, and then we'll start rolling. P38 is very responsive to taxi, so you can just get away by using the tow brakes or differential power as needed. For taking off on the P38, you set the RPM to fully forward at constant speed and the mixture will stay on auto rich. The flaps will be up and the oil and coolant shuttles will be automatic and the inner cooler will be open. We'll set all the trims to zero and then we're going to hold the brakes and then increase the manifold pressure to 46 inches and wait a few seconds to allow the turbo supercharger to begin generating a constant power. Then you can release the brakes and increase the manifold pressure to 54 inches and then about 80 miles per hour you start adding some back pressure on the stick to rotate at 100 miles per hour then you can begin climbing at 160 miles per hour for your best speed. As we take the runway here, uh, one thing to remember with the P38 is that the nose wheel is freely movable. So you don't want to come to an abrupt stop when you do this because otherwise the nose wheel is going to be uh, cocked off to the side and that'll make it um, harder for you to take off in a straight line initially. So as we line up in the middle here, we'll roll forward a few extra feet, keeping it straight and coming to a complete stop. This will help keep the nose wheel straight and you can verify the position of the nose wheel if you like in that polished area on the nacelle. So here we can go through our takeoff items. RPMs all the way full with constant speed, mixtures at the auto rich position. The trims are centered at zero. So now we can hold the brakes and we'll begin applying our power up to 46 inches. And we're going to keep it there for a few seconds with the brakes held. This will allow the turbo supercharger to generate a constant amount of power for the takeoff run. So we're holding it here with our brakes. Then when you're ready, you can release the brakes. And we'll increase the power to 54 inches and we'll start rolling. Now we're going to accelerate pretty quickly, it's about 80 miles an hour. We'll start gently easing back on the stick and then a bit over 100 miles per hour we'll rotate and get it in the air. And we can raise the landing gear and bring that up. We're going to have to pitch up to maintain the climb speed of 160 miles per hour. Climb pretty quickly at this rate. So once we reach up to patent altitude, we'll start bringing the power back, and lowering the nose, and we'll bring it back to that 44 inches and 2,600 RPM. Then we'll make that left turn. We join the pattern. We'll look at how to land the P38. So to land the P38 on downwind, you set your mixture to the auto rich position. The RPM will be at 2,600. Your speed, you'll get it down below 175 miles per hour. This will allow you to extend the landing gear and you'll slow down to about 150 miles per hour by the end of downwind. Then as you begin your base to final turn, you're going to maintain that 150 miles per hour all the way around the short final, and that's the point you're going to extend the flaps fully, but only when the landing is assured. 
At that point, you'll end up slowing to about 120 to 130 miles per hour as you come in, crossing the threshold about 110 or so, then you come in for the touchdown. Right, so we're establishing on downward now, maintaining our altitude. We're going to keep that power back a bit because we're a little bit fast. If you want to slow it down, it'll be below 175 miles per hour. So once we get to that point, getting close now, so we'll extend the landing gear. As the landing gear comes down, I'm going to add some nose up, elevator trim, help keep myself level, as well as adding some power. Uh, this will help me maintain that 150 miles per hour that I want. So as we're flying along, it's going to be hard to keep sight of the runway, so you may need to bank the wing a little bit just to get an idea of where you are. This way you'll know when to make that uh, base to final turn. So we're getting pretty close now. So I'll make that base to final turn now. And uh, we're going to maintain uh, 150 miles per hour in the turn. It's going to need about 15 to 20 inches of uh, manifold pressure all the way around. I'm trying to visualize our aim point being towards the beginning of that runway. The P38 is going to feel a little bit nose heavy. So you're going to need some uh, more nose up trim as you come around. We're doing our best to maintain our airspeed and flying towards our aim point. As you start getting around towards short final, once you know you have the runway made um, and you make it at idle power, that's the point you can start extending the flaps out all the way. And here it looks pretty good. So we'll start bringing them all the way out, holding down that flap extension. We can start bringing the power back as well if you need to, because we're slowing down to about 120 to 130 miles per hour. Flying towards the aiming point. We'll essentially be at idle power right now. It's now just a matter of bleeding off your vertical speed and slowing down and holding it up, making sure the main wheels touch first. You can maintain a bit of back pressure to keep the weight off the nose wheel as you're applying the brakes, then it'll help you come to a complete stop. That completes the tutorial on the P38 Lightning. If you enjoyed it, be sure to share with your friends and become a subscriber. And as always, don't forget to fly safe and check your six.